Here are the top eight backup and failover plans that your business should consider. Hey everyone, Alex Moen here with today's BizTech Tips, and we'll uh, talk about different ways to keep your business up and going just regardless of circumstances. And today we'll cover the top eight ways. So number one, just standard file duplication. This is the most common and probably kind of a, a duh moment for you there. Uh, but keep in mind, this also means everything that you normally keep on paper. Lots of people still even use paper for key things there. So having that just duplicated electronically helps a lot. But also lots of people use cloud-based things and they don't duplicate that. What if you got hacked and lost access or uh, a disgruntled employee went and deleted things or what if the cloud provider got uh, hacked there. You want to make sure you have those uh, files duplicated as well. Now, number two is off-site backup. So what if something happens or goes wrong at the office? You should be able to access your files anywhere. Ideally, this would be through a trusted cloud provider, uh, again, where you have duplicate files going on. But technically, off-site backup could even be just thumb drives or hard drives that you bring outside of the office there, too. It just takes longer to recover if you have to you know, go to another site and bring it back. Uh, number three is having a RAID setup, and RAID stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks. This just means having uh, essentially multiple uh, hard drives running in tandem, and if one hard drive breaks down, uh, the other one keeps you up and going. So you could essentially have a down hard drive with seamless, no loss of data or anything like that, and then your IT can get alerted and come put in another backup drive going right in there. So that way something could go wrong and you don't have to worry about any downtime. Uh, number four is what's called full image backup, and this is more thorough than just file duplication. This is essentially duplicating your entire computer. It's your operating systems, your user configuration, and the whole nine yards. So in the event that you get hacked or ransomware attack or uh, maybe a particular user's computer just breaks down, you get not only all the files back in place, you get their entire work environment. So this minimizes lost productivity and it also ensures like all the little things that uh, might not be lost there. And you don't have to reinstall software and set up the user and all that all over again. You just get it all zapped into a new computer essentially. Uh, number five is internet failover. So uh, what if your internet service provider goes down? Um, over the course of a full year, the average ISP has a, about four days of downtime. So what does that downtime mean to your business? How can you keep things up and going? So things like mesh networks or getting Wi-Fi like hotspots or cell phone uh, hotspots or anything like that are more and more inexpensive as things go on. So uh, just make sure if you do have uh, internet backup that it's not a provider that runs through the same cable. Sometimes multiple uh, you know, ISPs share the same cable going into the building and if the problem's in the cable, then you're out of luck there too. Uh, number six is backup power. So over the course of the year, depending on where you are in the US and you know uh, what's going on there, if it's residential, like a work from home office or business, uh, electricity is down somewhere between two to 10 hours uh, per year. Um, so when calculating the cost of this, don't just think of the lost productivity, um, but keep in mind what would potentially happen on the tech side of things. So uh, we have or hear of lots of people with older servers, for instance, the power goes out just briefly and then they can't get back up and then it takes multiple days to get things up and going. So depending on what could happen there for your business, maybe that's just getting uh, what's called a UPS. So that's un uninterruptible power supply. Um, it's not like a full generator, it just gives enough time for something to safely shut down. Or maybe you do want that full generator just in case. Now, number seven is having backup phone options also. So although hardline phones, they're pretty resilient, what if you can't be in the office? So like we saw lots of this with COVID and everything going on. When people start working from home, how easily can your phone lines get redirected? Do you have internal phone lists or are people using cell phones as backup? So have that in mind too, especially if you're a phone heavy business. And then number eight, just having backup hardware. So an easy example is if a computer breaks down, uh, does that person literally have to sit around or wait until a new computer gets shipped and set up and all that? Um, or maybe there's a particularly rough IT problem. Uh, if you have a backup computer, it literally just takes five minutes for IT to swap out the computer and get that worker back up and going while they solve the more intense problem. Uh, but backup hardware could be more than just the computer. Maybe it's the router or the switch, or uh, if you have a physical firewall, what happens if those go down? Because that could infect 
uh, affect the entire network or multiple users there too. So keep that in mind when putting those together. So that's my top eight list of different backup and failover things. Let me know if you think I missed anything uh, or if you learned something there too. Um, don't forget to like and uh, let me know in the comments uh, what you're thinking and have a good one.